Recently, MIUI 8 was made available for a few devices. And in today's video, let's look at 12 things that I feel you should know about MIUI 8. Hey guys, this is Ash here from C4 Retech, and let's get started. Let's start with the lock screen. We now have a wallpaper carousel that gives you wallpaper suggestions based on your interests. The aesthetics have changed. MIUI 8 is more colorful with some icon changes and even some default apps have received a makeover. The notification bar now has quick toggles built in like you'd see with say, TouchWiz. If you're not a fan of it, there's also an option that lets you go back to the two-page status bar. Talking about notifications, the screenshots don't show up under notifications anymore. Instead, a small thumbnail stays visible to the top right for a few seconds. Tap it and you can share or capture longer screenshots if in case the app in question has more data to scroll down and show. Albums have received a revamp too and show more. You can multi-select and swipe from the bottom for easy share options. The photo editor has also gotten a ton of features. It's the same with the video editor. With MIUI 8, we also get the option to clone apps. Want two instances of WhatsApp? Well, you can do that now. If that's not enough and you want two entirely different sets of home screens with their own dedicated layout and data, that's possible with Second Space. Each space can be accessed via a set pattern, pin or password. And you can easily switch with the switch space icon. And then there's a touch assistant, a floating virtual key that gives you some shortcuts, especially useful on phones with large displays. This can also be disabled for as few select apps. Makes sense in case you don't want it floating around when watching a video, for example. My favorite change though, is with regards to how volume controls work. We now get a more stock Android-esque drop-down that lets us easily control volume for notifications, media, and alarms. Glad to see Xiaomi admit when this talk is better and adopt it. One of the biggest changes here is with regards to the camera app. And I'm not sure how I feel about this. There's no more swiping for filters and modes, instead they're available at the bottom. But now for HDR and flash, you need to reach up to the top corners. If shooting in portrait, it's gonna be annoying having to reach to the corners. But if in landscape, you're probably gonna be shooting two-handed and it should be okay. So how I'm gonna feel about it? Well, I guess only time will tell. So barring these 12, there are also a lot of other changes, including a few gimmicky ones. These are the 12 major ones that I thought I'd let you guys know. So what do you think about the list? Did I miss your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. So I guess that's it for this video. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Vote it down if you didn't. If you have any constructive criticism to offer, head on over to the comment section below. And subscribe if you haven't already. So. That's it for now. Hope you liked the video. Hope you found it useful. Thanks for watching. And uh, if you want to help the channel out, consider changing your Amazon or Flipkart URLs to ones with our affiliate ID. And until next time, this is Ash here from C4E Tech signing off. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye now.